So, suffering. Suffering? Yeah, suffering. Yeah. Yet again. Well, uh, you know, it's a word, mm -hmm. and it doesn't really capture uh, the phenomena that we're talking about. But I, yeah. I think, uh, you know, sometimes as, as one starts to have practice, mm -hmm. uh, one starts to go through such lovely periods and sort of noticing the miracle of life in such a more profound way mm -hmm. that then suffering arrives mm -hmm. and as we've discussed before you think oh that's that's all been a sham or uh, what's wrong with my practice and so forth um, but as we've also talked about that suffering is usually a pointer if not always a pointer to some attachment that is still being held on to right. that is not in our awareness that we don't realize that we're attached to it. So uh, I thought what we would talk about a little bit is just some of the basic techniques for releasing those attachments when the suffering comes up. Because our tendency is to feel like, oh, I have suffering, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find some coping strategy to deal with that suffering, right? I'm going to drink, or I'm going to smoke right. weed, or I'm going right. to find someone else to have sex with, or, you know, fill, I'm going to binge watch TV, you know, yeah. fill in the blanks. Yeah. Uh, but as soon as we do that, we miss the opportunity that the suffering offers us, mm -hmm. which is to do some things which are at least as really enjoyable, frankly, mm -hmm. <laughs> as any of those quote-unquote coping strategies, and mm -hmm. so therefore can themselves become coping strategies right. after a time of really getting down there in order to release those attachments. So mm -hmm. I thought we would just review some of those. Yeah, I mean, the whole idea, this, we've had touches a couple times before, but this is Buddhism 101. You know, it's, you know, we have we suffer because of attachments, mm -hmm. but that we had, didn't have elaborated in the prior video. You know, the fact that there are two especially very useful protocols to apply to your attachments and your suffering that can really amazingly let go of them. Mm -hmm. And it's one's Byron Katie stuff, mm -hmm. and one's a stoner method. Byron Katie's very simple. It's, is this true? Can I be sure it's true? How do I feel when I have it? How do I feel when I didn't have it? Is it just as likely to be 180 out from that? Uh, those are the five main questions. That's the Byron Katie process. And you apply those, for example, because to the thoughts you're having, because for most of the time, the suffering is the thought version of, say, pain or some misfortune. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you're having thoughts where you're worried about your father or your mm -hmm. grandfather, and that's causing suffering in you. And you can subject that those thoughts mm -hmm. to that. Protocol, saying, sure. is that true? Well, even if you have, yeah. you have some malady, you think, OMG, oh, what is this thing? I've got this, this pain in my belly. Mm -hmm. I say, well, I'll go on the internet and check out. Oh, there's a good idea. <laughs> so, <laughs> what, you, know, <laughs> go this, you come up with a story. It's got to be, you gotta be you know, cancer, some kind of deep, horrible cancer. Yeah, but not just any cancer. No, I mean, really, yeah. it's a horrible cancer. Yeah. And then, and then you stop to say, okay, so this yeah. is a story. I've got a story, this must be cancer. My, my great grandfather died of stomach cancer. I must have stomach cancer. So, well, is that true? Huh. Well, you begin to look at that, mm -hmm. analytically, non-internet-wise, mm -hmm. and say, is that true? Is it likely I have cancer? You say, well, not very likely. I've watched my mm -hmm. diet. I've taken mm -hmm. care of myself. Mm -hmm. You can say, can I be certain it is true? No. Definitely you, can't be certain that it's true. certain it's true. How do you feel when you have it? I feel really bad. Yeah. I'm scared. I'm frightened. How do you feel without it? Pretty cool. Is it just likely opposite to be true that you don't have stomach cancer? You say, yeah, it's probably, in fact, it's way more probably likely. Even way more likely I don't have it than I do. And that's the Byron Katie process. That's just right. very simple. Right. You can do it just about that fast. And you can apply it to any attachment, any story. It just completely cleans it out. You wouldn't think something as simple as that, uh, so elegantly put, would actually have that much power. But it does it just one, two, three, four, five. And you can really deactivate a lot of the energy attached to those attachments or stories just by doing a very simple process. And the more you do it, the more you kind of feel your way into it and you can feel when something is being released, when you can say, well, is that true? Mm -hmm. And you can kind of watch the fake certitude that you have built up around mm -hmm. some imagined mm -hmm. story fall away. Mm -hmm. And when you say, couldn't the very opposite thing be true? Mm -hmm. And you can feel 
the release Precisely. that's associated with it. Precisely. And so feeling one's way into it and out of it, it seems to me, is really crucial to finding those hooks of that attachment because you have to figure out what am I asking about being true? Because the, the cancer mm -hmm. example was very you know, straightforward and clear cut, but a lot of times I have found at least that you know, some of my attachments have been really not immediately obvious to me. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, so you know, recently I had my bike stolen, mm -hmm. right? I was, and I was surprised at how attached I felt to it. Yeah. You know, like the amount of grief I felt from a thing being taken from yeah. me. It's a cool bike thing. It was a very cool bike, but it's, it's still just a thing, yeah. you know? So what was, what was been interesting about the process is to then sort of observe it. It's like, well, is it really the bike that I'm missing here? What, what, what is it? Is it, is, it is it the loss of time that I felt like I put into that? No, it's not that. What, what is it? It's like, well, it's really just that there's a portion of my life that is gone. But is that really, it, it, doesn't that really mean that it's now <laughs> as opposed to then? Right. So in really getting in and feeling that what it really kind of appeared as grief, right. to be honest with you, and then just feeling out, well, what is the nature of the attachment there? Right. Instead of like, oh, I, you know, I lost my bike. You, know, it's, you feel out the nature of that attachment. And whatever is being taught to you can then be learned. Yeah, and I think the key, key thing is feel, feel, feel. I mean, the amazing thing out of the attachments for me is that as you let go of a deep attachment, whether it's a you know, car or a yeah. bike or whatever it is, you can just feel that you know something sweet happens. I oh. mean, somehow we have an evolutionarily, Darwinianly encoded uh, the ability of the brain to give us a shot of dopamine or opioids or whatever to let go of something like that. Because the brain must feel like, look, this has been holding us up, this is tight, this has been binding up a lot of energy, it's taking up some real estate, we're letting go of it now, it's like, oh, it just feels so good to let go of the attachment. Simply the great. absence of the thoughts about yeah. the attachments and the energy of those thoughts yeah. binding to those attachments right. feels, by comparison, just remarkable. What well, if you have some, some really early childhood bad traumas? Mm -hmm. And they're almost, oh, I can't, go, can't even go there. And you start to go in there, and you mm -hmm. can see that as you begin to just, just begin to start to unwind them, that there's so much, oh, oh, sweetness comes yeah. out of that. And then maybe some of that more bad stories and bad feelings, then you let go of those. It's, oh, more yeah. and more sweetness arrives. And so the brain has encoded, thankfully, this ability to let go mm -hmm. of that. Attachment. It was causing so much pain, anguish, stuff running back in the processor mm -hmm. all the mm -hmm. time, inhibiting all your actions. And you get rewarded for that. And as you do that, all those things that you thought you were, mm -hmm. that yeah. you're so certain who you were, mm -hmm. really begin to dissolve. Mm -hmm. And so as you let go of those, you're also letting go of the I. Mm -hmm. And it, it feels wonderful. It doesn't feel like the absence of those things. No, no. It feels like the presence of that sweetness. Yeah. that you were alluding to. Yeah. And the process then becomes a kind of endless adventure in ever more deep releasing right. of who you thought you were. Yeah, and Sedona is another overlay on this. Basically, I confuse those together with Brian Katie. Mm -hmm. Where did you actually look at this attachment? Mm -hmm. what doing here? You say, could I let go of this thing? Mm -hmm. You can see, could I let go of this bike? Or this mm -hmm. BMW or whatever. Not it's too soon. It's no, too soon. not too soon. I don't know. I don't know that. Well, okay. Uh, not yet. Okay. Well, actually, it, it, yeah. would you let go? The second yeah. question is: yeah. would, would you let go of this? Yeah. Is it really useful for you to have this attachment? No. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I will not let go of that bike. Never. You say, "What's well, it? Something in the future you could do this." Three, three steps. Yeah. Could I? Would I? Sometime in the future? You say, "Well, I could. I could let go of it in a year and a half." You said, "No, I will never let go of it." Even if you say, "No." No, never. I know. The brain has to bring it up into consciousness and look at the possibilities. Like, hey, I never let go of that attachment to that bike. 
We can let go of that? Yeah, we can let go of that. Raising the question is almost the release itself. Yeah, raising the question actually brings it up into consideration. Yeah. And the brain now knows that's a possibility. Yeah. We can we can dump this if we if we want to. Yeah. He may say no, no, never, but you know, yeah. we look at it and we think this you know it's kind of a waste of time. Let's just move it. Right, because there's something there besides the eye making the evaluation. Yes. The yeah. eye says, No way no, I can no. let go of that. No. My and the mind. brain says, actually it can go. Bring it out to the curb. <laughs> <laughs> right, actually, actually, we look at the down here. We yeah, look like, at this thing. That, yeah, yeah, we're not really that interested. I know you're attached to it, but yeah. yeah um, exactly. No, so it's it's a it's a beautiful process. So again, you do that enough that then, when suffering, as appears to be inevitable, finite beings that we are, occurs. That it's almost like I think it was Suzuki who said, you know that he was excited when it was time to pull some weeds. Oh yeah, mine weeds. Yeah, mine weeds. That it's almost that when when some suffering can emerge, you say, "Oh, there's one. Look. <laughs> I'm being taught something. I didn't know I had anything to learn about that." Yeah. And there's a there's a there's a sharpness to it, but there's also an equally intense sweetness to mm -hmm. it. Because as much as I love that bike, mm -hmm. the opportunity to let go of it yeah. is almost more beautiful than, yeah. you know, having it again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah.